All right. I'm going to get started. Good morning. Uh, my name is Juan Natera, uh, and I'm going to be talking about a uh, custom Facebook integration. Um, this is my fir first YAPSI, so I'm pretty excited about that. Um, all right. So before going any further, um, just, just want to let you know that uh, this stuff that we're going to see uh, was the work of a lot of people. Uh, these are just some of the names uh, of the engineers, QA engineers, uh, pro persons, program management that were involved in developing this, this project. Um, so I just want to give a nod to them. Um, also, um, I wanted to uh, introduce me. Uh, I've been using Pro since 2000. I'm currently working at Ticketmaster as a lead engineer. And I'm a member of uh, Los Angeles ProMongers. Formerly, I was a, a member of Caracas PM, which is in Venezuela, South America. Okay. Um, so I assume that um, all of you are here because uh, there weren't any seats left at the jQuery talk. So. Um, Thank you for coming, and I'll, I'll try to make it worth it. So I'll, I'll give you a, a quick introduction to jQuery, and um, that's just kidding. Okay. Uh, this is actually what we're going to be talking about. We're going to be um, – I'll quickly uh, touch on Facebook Graph, which is uh, the, the library that we use to integrate with Facebook. Um, I'll give you uh, an overview of, of the different components of, of our – Integration um, and show you some of the some of the actual uh, the integration live uh, at Ticketmaster.com. Um, finally, I will I will um, next I'll, I'll be talking about the problems we faced and how um, and how we solved them. So that's that's basically it. Um, I don't I actually don't know if I have enough material to cover the the 50 minutes of the talk, but hopefully. Um, will will be enough. Okay. So, Facebook Graph. Uh, it's the library that, um, like I mentioned, uh, we used. It's uh, Moose based. It's it's very easy to extend. It was created by J T Smith, which, as some of you might know, was the uh, is the YAPC uh, 2012 organizer uh, here in North America. Um, okay, there, there are a couple of um, – he actually created a couple of tutorials, and uh, they are uploaded in um, – posted at Perl.com. So I'm just going to quickly go over those to give you an idea of the kind of stuff that is possible. Um, so – in this, in this article, he talks about uh, using Facebook Graph to provide uh, Facebook authentication for your website. Um, so in essence, the first thing you need to do is go to Facebook, create an account if you don't have one. Uh, there are still a few people that don't have a Facebook account. Um, and and re register your application. Okay? Uh, by registering your application, you're going to get a, an application ID, an application secret which is uh, two pieces of data that you need in order to use uh, Facebook Graph. Um, so um, in here he has a, a, a dancer application that um, basically allows you to uh, use Facebook to, to log in to, into your website. And what it basically does is um, it requests a token on behalf of the user. And that access token allows you to make calls on behalf of the user to get data from Facebook or post stuff to Facebook. Um, so uh, pretty nice tutorial. Check it out if you, if you need to. Um, uh, he has a follow-up example in which uh, he describes how to 
post to people's wall um, using Facebook Graph. So check it out. It's in uh, Perl.com in the archive for April of 2011. Okay. So back to the presentation. Um, okay. So, um, okay. So basically, the integration of the Data Ticketmaster uh, has two main components. Um, one is the RSVP module that can show up in, in multiple pages. Additionally, we have uh, SIG tagging capabilities, which um, is a special case of RSVP. The difference, obviously, is that um, in, in an RSVP, you're just saying, hey, I'm attending this event, or I'm not attending, or maybe I'm going. And when you're talking about seat tagging, obviously, uh, you're, you're actually saying, hey, I'm going to this event, and I'm sitting here. Um, so a, a seat tag, in our case, also counts as an RSVP, but not the other way around. Um, seat tagging. Uh, can be performed in a couple of places. Um, one is the event details page. And the reason for this is that the, uh, and, and we'll see it in a minute, is that that's, that's where the actual map is shown, where the user can select where they're sitting. Um, also, um, in the confirmation page, after you make your purchase, if you, if you didn't, for example, um, If you didn't do it in the event detail page, you can you can do it in the confirmation page, or after you make your purchase, you can go back to the event detail page, and and mark what, what seats you bought and tag your friends and whatnot. Um, so, let's let's take a look at this. See how what what I'm talking about. Um, okay. So this is the Ticketmaster homepage. Um, and here on the right, this is the, this is the RSVP module. And as you can see, um, it has uh, the most popular events for, for the area that you are localized to. Uh, so this, these are all Wisconsin venues. And you can see that uh, 498 people have RSVP to this particular event. Um, if I actually had any friends here that are connected to Facebook and they're sharing their information, um, they will be shown in this tab here. Um, so this is this is what it looks and looks like in the homepage. When we go to an artist page, which is a little different because Obviously, um, it's, it's, it's going to show up stuff about events for a particular artist. So in this case, uh, it's the Foo Fighters. Um, and here you can, you can see that it's asking me to, to RSVP to the event. And it's showing me a list of the people that are attending that particular event. Again, if I had any friends that are going to this They'll, they, they'll show up here. Um, you can, you know, browse who's going there. Now, um, one thing I wanted to mention, make sure that, um, you know, it's clear. All these, um, all these people shared to, to um, chose to, to share their information with everybody, which means it's public. It's available for anybody to see. Um, you, you can also share your information with just your friends. So if you want uh, just that close group to be able to see uh, if you're going and whatnot, only they will be able to see it. OK. Um, OK, so, um, so I talked about the home page. I talked about the artist page. Uh, there are a few other cases. You have the venue page in which you know we list all the events that occur at that particular venue. Uh, all the upcoming events occurring at that particular venue. Uh, section page, for example, if I go to sports, 
Um, you'll see there's also a, um, an RSVP module here that allows you to see, you know, who's going and um, if your friends are going. So obviously, uh, you know, each, each of these uh, modules is, are pulling data from different places. And um, the amount of data that needs to be crunched to, to display it, you know, varies from city to city, event to event, et cetera. But um, obviously, it's not something that we want to do on every request of this page. We just don't crunch this data and, and pull it up and show it. We, um, we, we try to save ourselves from doing that. Now, I'm going to talk about that later. So, okay, finally, um, this is uh, this are an event detail page for, for an event occurring at the uh, Fox Cities PAC. Um, and I picked this event just because it had a map. Not all, not all of our Ticketmaster events have, have maps. Um, so in this particular case, um, you see a map of the venue with, you know, the, the different seats are, are shown. And on this, this side here, we have the, the Facebook module in the ADP. Um, again, it allows you to see um, filter by people sharing with everyone, your friends only, um, and so on. You can, you can see the sections that have um, Facebook users are marked with a Facebook flag, and then, you know, you can drill down into, uh, into them and to see the people are actually uh, tagged to, the, to, to those seats. Well, um, in theory, if you are if you are tagging yourself to a seat, that means you own those tickets. Okay. Um, I'm saying it, it, because it would seem more, much more useful if you could see where your friends were sitting before you purchased the ticket first. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So again, I, I'm, I'm I haven't purchased tickets for this event, and if there were any of my friends that were going to this event and they were. Um, and they tag themselves to this map, I could okay. come here, filter by friends, and I would see them listed here. Um, obviously, I don't have any here, so, um, but I can see those that are sharing with everybody. And it's, it's basically the same functionality, right? Um, if, you, if you hover over this names, um, you can see it tells you the section, row C, where they're sitting, and so on. Um, so, your question reminded me of, of, of a point that, uh, that I should make is that normally, so a lot of people buy their, their tickets on Ticketmaster.com, right? And, but sometimes people buy the tickets outside of Ticketmaster, right? Um, they'll buy them from a friend or some, some other website. And basically, uh, our application allows them to to still come here and tag themselves. I, I can basically come and tag myself to any of the of the seats that are already sold. Sold seats are marked as gray. Now, if if after that um, turns out that 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 seat doesn't belong to me, the owner can come and basically put whoever he wants in that seat. Um, but in, in, in this case, let's assume that I bought uh, these tickets. I can come here and tag myself to a seat and choose with whom I'm going to share it. So I can share it with everybody, my friends, and no one. Um, in, in the case of, um, of a purchase, though, the experience is a little different because I have multiple seats at my disposal. It's not just me tagging myself to one seat. Um, but I have potential, potentially multiple seats that I can that I can tag myself to, or I can tag my friends to. Um, so the way it works is, when I um, when when I come to to the event detail page, a dialog will pop up. 
that will show me all the seats that I bought. I have to log, be logged into Ticketmaster, of course, to be able to do that. Um, a dialog will pop up in which uh, allows me to s tag any of my friends or myself to the seats I own. Um, and that, that will translate in a, in a post to um, my friend's Facebook page, and they'll, from there they can either accept or um, deny that, uh, that tag. So if they don't, don't want to participate, basically, it's up to them. Um, okay. So, so th this is pretty much the, the, the application. Um, this, this module here on the left um, is uh, all uh, JavaScript code and HTML. This, the map itself is a Flash application that communicates back and forth with, with our uh, JavaScript code to, to display what needs to be shown here. And some of the things, some of the dialogues you see here, uh, you know, are invoked by, by the Flash widget to, um, to be displayed and so on. Okay, so that's, that's pretty much um, That's, that's what it looks like. Um, so let's continue then. Okay. So this is uh, a 50,000 feet view of what, what our application looks like. Okay. Um, so you have the C tagging code and the RSVP code, uh, which, by the way, this, this RSVPs have nothing to do with the actual Facebook RSVPs. Facebook has a concept of events that you can RSVP to, um, and we hook, hook into that. But um, the RSVPs that I'm talking about here are the ones that are made um, on the Ticketmaster side. Okay, so... Basically, this this is this is what it looks like, right? And we have um, this, our seat tagging code connects to the Facebook graph um, client that we built, and to perform um, calls like, okay, get me information about this user, get me information about uh, the user's friends, um, and so on. The only information that that we pull from Facebook are things like your name, uh, your picture. And so on. Um, so, this any, any requests that goes out to Facebook goes through our our queuing system, which allows us to basically turn a synchronous request to Facebook into an asynchronous request, so that the UI is not blocked uh, on on waiting for for stuff from from the third party. Okay. Um, we store the actual tags in the database. We don't store any uh, Facebook information in our database other than you know, just the ID. Um, obviously, when we going, going out to Facebook to get stuff, that's, we consider that an expensive operation, and we want to cache results of, the, of these calls. So um, we go to Facebook Graph, we request data, um, we put it in cache. If a user is tagging themselves, we store that in the database. And basically, the same the same thing applies for the RSVP module. Uh, we go to Facebook to get data, so we can display. Okay, are any of your friends going? And who are your friends? So you can select. Uh, in the case of tagging, for example, when we display the dialog that allows you to to associate one of your friends to a seat, we need to know who your friends are. So we need to go to Facebook and pull that data from for you. Um, so again, this is the very high level view of, of the integration. Okay, so what are the problems? So I briefly touched on some of this already. Um, I'll, I'll be going into more details. But in essence, um, talking to third parties can be slow. 
we need to retrieve, process, and aggregate lots of data. Um, and another complication we have is that the information shown really depends on the viewing user, right? Um, my friends are not necessarily the same as your friends, and anything that is shown on a page is really your view of, of, of that state. It's not, um, it's basically, it's not shared. It's, it's for you only, right? So um, be before we, uh, before I continue here, I, I wanted to give you guys a warning. Um, this, is, this is from the scene in Apollo 13 in which, uh, you know, Houston, we got a problem, and, and the guys uh, in Houston basically need to figure out how to fix it with a certain set of tools. So um, I know that in our case, there, there are probably better tools we could have used to, to perform a, our integration, but we, we were limited to a certain number of things, and that's how we did it, you know. It's, in a way, those constraints made it a little bit more interesting. So, okay. Talking to third parties can be slow. So how, how do we solve this? Uh, actually, yeah. We, we place all the requests going to, to a third party, in this case Facebook, in our queue system. Uh, our queue system have dedicated processes that uh, perform synchronous requests on behalf of the application. Um, and then the application can later come and check for the status of, uh, of our request, and if, you know, if, we, if we have the answer, then it will retrieve the results. Otherwise, you know, we'll repeat that process later. Um, obviously, we, you want to cache as much as, much as you can. You don't want to uh, be having to go out each time you want to, to retrieve this information. So cache as much as you can. And you'll see this in several slides. Okay. So, okay. Obviously, there's, there's a need to retrieve lots of data. And a lot of the data, like I mentioned before, is, is very specific to the viewing user. So um, in our case, for example, when we are in the case of the event detail page where we have several hundred users sharing their information, and we need to go out and go out to Facebook and pull information for uh, about those users, their, their profile, uh, URL, the picture, the name, and so on. So we can display uh, the pictures and, and names and stuff. Um, that information is specific to, to the events, right? And let's say that, um, let me show you something. Right, so we, we, we pull this information from Facebook. And um, in this case, I don't know how many there are here, but maybe, I don't know, maybe a couple dozen or so. Um, so we, we need to be able to to be a little smart about this. And when we go to the database and see, okay, so there are, there are 400 users that are uh, tagged to this particular event, and we need to go and get their data, the data from them in Facebook. We don't actually try to request information for users we already have. So what we do is, uh, that we have in cache. So what we do is we figure out the delta, okay, so what, what do we have in cache, what users we don't know about, and then we'll make the request to get the data of the users we don't know about. And then we'll update the information in cache so that uh, next time we, we don't have to, um, so we don't have to go um, again to Facebook and, and pull out that data. So um, figure, figuring out the deltas so that you request uh, smaller amounts of data from them, okay? Um, from the application side, uh, don't transfer data if you don't need to. So basically, 
when when a user um, when the browser makes a request to our, to our backend uh, to retrieve information, it does it. Um, it, it provides a, a, a value in the ETAG header, which basically is it's a version number. So what we do is we compare that to to the data we have um, for the event, and if the versions don't match, then you know that uh, there's there's fresher data. So you'll pull that information up. But if, if, if it's the same, then the communication ends there. There's no need to exchange any more, any more data. Um, so again, um, also when, when you're talking about either um, pulling data from Facebook or going to the database, you cache as much of that data as you can. So that's that. OK. Uh, next step is we need to process and aggregate lots of data. So certain data uh, needs to be fresher than than some other data. For example, when we go to the home page, um, you know that that displays, for example, RSVPs about all the events that are occurring in that particular region, right? Um, so beca because it aggregates data from lots of events, it can potentially change with um, high frequency, more so than one particular event it's, uh, by itself. So when we, when we retrieve and process this data, what we do is we actually store it in the database so that um, we don't have to recalculate it every time. And and again, a lot of a lot of this information is is cached as well, so we don't even have to hit the database if we don't if we don't have to. Um, another another important thing that we do is uh, make sure that everyone doesn't process the same data at the same time. And what I mean by this is, when you're going to, for example, um, there are a lot of people going to to the homepage, right? And we don't we don't want all of those users to initiate a process, a process to, to generate the data that's going to be used. So um, what we do is we implement semaphores so that um, only one process is in charge of generating this data, and the others just wait. And, and once, once the, the process that got, got a hold of the semaphore um, completes, then the other process can can just pull the data from cache instead of having to go and generate themselves. So obviously, this saves a lot of, of um, CPU time and I/O and so on. Um, again, cache as da much data as you can. Um, okay, so this is this is the other uh, big issue we had and. Information that is shown actually depends on the on the viewer of, of a particular page, right? So, like like I mentioned before, I have different friends than you do, and we really don't want to um, we don't want to generate a lot of data and push push it to the clients and. Have have the browsers process that data and, and just display what you need to see, right? Because that that would create a privacy issue. Uh, I don't need to know who your friends are or who somebody that I don't know uh, who, who their friends are and so on. So what you get is really information about either people that desire to share uh, uh, desire to, to share the information with everybody, uh, which basically grants you permission to view it, or you and your friends, right? So, by by creating that that separation of, of data, uh, it allows you to 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 cache it more uh, in a smarter way. And what I mean by this is, when a user looks at a, an event detail page and sees the map, right, and they see 
uh, a list of uh, all the users that are tagged uh, to, that, to that event they are sharing with everybody, and then they switch to their friends. What, what a user really cares about is not so much about the people that are sharing with, with everybody, but they care to see their friends' information, right? So by, by separating, uh, by partitioning the data into people that are sharing with everybody and people and that are your friends, you're, you're able to save yourself from, from having to uh, calculate and process the, the, the data of the people that are in the bucket of everybody all the time. So, and, and also that data doesn't need to be as fresh as the information about you and your friends. So in the bucket of people sharing with everybody, which can be you, by the way. You can be sharing with everybody. Um, that, that data is cached for longer periods of time. So let's say there, there are, I don't know, 1,000 users tagged tag to, a, to a map and 500 of them are sharing with everybody. Those, those 500 are going to be cached for a period of time that is much larger than the information about you and your friends. So, um, and the way, the way it works is the information about everybody basically is uh, – you overlap on top of it information about you and your friends. But they are partitioning uh, that way and they're cached separately so you can, uh, you can have fresher data and, and more current data on the data that you actually care about. Um, the other thing you can do is befriend your DBAs and I'll show you why that is important in a minute. So, um, turns out that a query like the one you see here has has a lot of limits because there's there's actually a number of there's a limit to the number of values you can put in in a statement like this. Okay, so in this case we're using a, a relational database, right? And in order to get uh, all the users that are tagged to a to a particular event, you need to run a query similar to this. Um, but if there are lots of users, then they don't all fit into this in clause. So uh, what we found out with the help of um, some of our um, senior engineers and DBAs was that we can actually use an Oracle temporary global table uh, which provides in-memory storage that is private for each connection. Um, so what we do is first we insert, um, we insert the Facebook IDs of uh, all your friends into this table, and then we make a join against the table that has the actual seed tags, and we can very quickly pull out all the tags that belong to to you and your friends. Um, this, this, this was a, a very interesting problem, and, and we're glad we were able to find a solution that, you know, helped us uh, meet the requirements. So, um, yeah. Okay. Mm, and that's all I have. Do you guys have any questions? So the question is how much of the Ticketmaster site is Perl, which doesn't have a lot to do with the presentation, but um, all, all the, the application right now that powers the website itself is, is a mod Perl application. Yeah. Um, so basically all the pages that you see in Ticketmaster.com, except um, the static ones, are, are generated by a, by a mod Perl application. Mm -hmm. So on the database side, uh, are there speed issues with your keys or uh, indexing? Okay, 
So the question was, uh, if there if there were any speed issues uh, related to keys and indexing on the database side. And, yeah, the answer is not really. Um, you know, we, we use, uh, we're using Oracle to store this, um, this information, and it actually, you know, it can handle millions and millions of records really well. So um, as long as you're, you, you have your keys uh, set up correctly in the database and you're, you have index, indexes in them, uh, it works just fine. Right, so um, we don't, but the way, but that's an action that basically invalidates cash. So any information that's about you or your friends would basically go out and make sure that um, we'll give you information about the tax, right? I'm, I'm not talking about your friends. If, if, if it's only a friend of yours, it's not your friend anymore, but you tagged him, well, that, that's in the database. So that relationship is, is still there, but um, maybe maybe if your friend changes their profile picture, you won't see it immediately because you know data about that data about your friend is, is in cache and it's going to be there for a little bit. Um, but information about about the tags themselves, uh, you in the case of you and your friends, you always see the the most up to date information. Anything else? So you, you said that you uh, use this queue to train synchronous request to the page I assume that that's so that the page can go ahead and render uh, from the other web browser. How do you, when the job is complete, how do you get that data back to the web page, or do you just populate the cache and then wait for it to go to the cloud? Yeah. Um, when, when the front end, the, the UI basically needs to um, it gets handed out a token that allows it to go back and check later for the status of that request. So um, some of those tokens are internal to, the, to, to our application. Some of them make it all the way to the UI. Yeah. Anybody else? That's it. All right. Thank you so much. And here, here are some references to um, to the Facebook documentation, that the, uh, both articles that I uh, mentioned about uh, Facebook Graph that J.T. Smith did, and as well as a link to a success story. That's something I forgot to mention. Um, each This was definitely a success story for us. Each each tag that you share on Facebook basically translates into, at the time of the, this article was written, to six dollars uh, for Ticketmaster because that causes people to, um, you know, they, they want to try to buy tickets to the events that uh, their friends are going. So, and, and they can also go and when because of the map, they can go and try to find tickets next to, to their friends. So, um, yeah, it's a very cool feature for us. Um, yeah, we, we can do that, they, but they have to, you know, the user has to give the okay for that, yeah. So basically, you just download the picture and the name and the next advance and then set the exact Right. Yep. Cool. Thank you.